Yes, good evening. I'm Tony Martin. That's Ed Cavalier, as advertised. And welcome again to The Joy of Sets, the show that week by week shows you how to put together your own hit TV format using only your bare hands. And Ed, what are we offering this week? Justice. That's right, justice. Uh, sorry, Tony, uh, can I stop you there? These, these credits are driving me crazy. I hate those. I mean, they just go on forever the in justice. Jackson, shows. what? And honestly, Tony, if we don't stop them now, they're going to be here till after the first ad break. What Dang can I stop it? Oh, that's better. That's better. That's much better. Yeah, thank you. Now, cops and lawyers are all over prime time, and as a result, we know more about forensic procedures than things that are actually relevant to our lives. For example, Ed, how does a plane stay up in the uh, air? I don't know. How does uh, a light bulb work? Couldn't tell you. When you're faking a gun suicide, what should you always do? Not leave the gun in the victim's hand. Because? Uh, because the recoil would throw it across the room. That's actually true. How do we know that? Yes, thank you very much. And you're not how the shows themselves actually get from the TV station into our TV. That's because cop shows have been on TV forever. So, if you're going to make one, you have to find a fresh idea, like they did on my favourite Aussie cop show ever, Cops LAC. Oh, oh, Cops LAC. Cops LAC. <laughs> now, we've all seen car chases before, but it took Cops LAC to come up with this angle. Oh, we're on a Boca Street in pursuit of a yellow XR8 Ute registration, Alpha Sierra 1980. Sierra 34, terminate pursuit, repeat, terminate pursuit. Don't slow down, go, go! Nathan, I'm on my pee plates. Yes! <laughs> I'm on my pee plates. I can't chase. No. That is top-notch drama, Tony. Original. Sure. You might ask why she was given the keys in the first place, but <laughs> never mind. I should say the motorcycles in Cops LAC had little baskets on the front. <laughs> what Cops LAC does is it shows that you don't need big explosions. You don't even need guns. He's going to knock over that server, isn't he? Got your gun? No. You? No. Freezer, I'll poke you. How did they not start laughing in the middle of that, Tony? I should tell you, there was an episode with the LAC SWAT team. They had to use bazookas. No. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're making a cop show, surprise people, but still give them the stuff that they expect, like big emotional scenes that help us learn more about the cops themselves. What does it say about me if I could shoot a man I'm in love with? It says you're a cop first. I love a second. You're a cop first and a lover second. <laughs> if you are dressed as a cop, but you are a lover first and a cop second, you are probably a male stripper. <laughs> I just... I just miss LAC, Tony. Yeah. Bring it back, Channel 9. Do not make me use this. <laughs> But, Ed, a justice show doesn't just have to be about cops. It can also be about lawyers, yes. lawyers who never lose. Now, courtroom dramas have changed since I was a kid when every single week Perry Mason would go, but, madam, are these not your eyeglasses? And is it not true that without them there's no way you could identify the man we see before us here today? Mm -hmm. What man? What man? Precisely. Case closed, bit of a gag, freeze frame, roll credits. <laughs> but these days... These days... Pretty much anything can happen in a courtroom, largely due to one man, David E. Kelly, oh, yes. the creator of Ally McBeal, The Practice and Boston Legal. Yes. If there's a circus clown in the dock, you know <laughs> you're watching a David E. Kelly production. If there's a dwarf lawyer strutting about like there was on L.A. Law mm -hmm. and Ally McBeal mm -hmm. and Boston Legal, you know the credits <laughs> are going to say, written by David E. Kelly. <laughs> if one of the firm's partners shows up at the office dressed like this, you know it's a David E. Kelly job. How happy would he have been the day he discovered Tourette's syndrome? Oh, yes. I think so far he's had a, a Tourette's judge, a Tourette's lawyer, an entire Tourette's jury in Fantastic. one episode. <laughs> Endless. Boston Legal is my favourite about a law firm that seems to exist solely to defend one of its own partners, Denny Crane, played by William <laughs> Shatner. There he is, the dignity of the law. <laughs> if there's an episode where Denny isn't on trial for accidentally shooting someone at the office, I'm yet to see it. <laughs> but, of course, the big feature of Boston Legal is the grandstanding speeches by James Spader's Alan Shaw. Have you seen them, Ed? Uh, not really, Tone. I haven't. I've, I've... Oh, really? 
You expect us to believe that you've never been flipping around the TV channels one night and come across James Spader making some elaborate speech, <laughs> one individual syllable at a time. A speech where, although he may be merely defending a gentleman <laughs> such as yourself against a, a simple parking violation, God forbid this should prevent Mr. Spader from pontificating at length about some unrelated matter, such as the fact that our government is spending $450 billion on the war in Afghanistan. Uh, and even though this may have no relevance whatsoever <laughs> to what we're talking about today, the judge makes no attempt whatsoever to interrupt as the speech goes on and on <laughs> about the victims of Katrina and the gun lobby and the many corporations that control every aspect of our lives. And even after he insults the judge and calls him a pinhead, Your Honor, you're a fool, still nobody interrupts. Sergeant, the court of had enough. I'm going to hold you for contempt of court. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judge Kaplan. Yes, the defense rests. Oh, abortion. Well now, done, sir. That was fantastic. Now, Warwick. Great job. How good was Warwick Kaplan? Uh, you having fun over there? I can't answer that. This has been pre recorded. Yeah. Makes sense, really, right. doesn't it? Yes. OK, uh, after the break, we teach you how to deal with reality cops and some cops you can't believe are real. Please stay with us. Do that. <laughs> yeah, do that. <laughs> oh, beautiful work, camera four. <laughs> yes, welcome back to the Joy of Sets. Tonight we're looking at TV justice. And, Ed, one cop show convention I can't get enough of is the police lineup. The actual criminal always having darting eyes, the suggestion maybe he can see through the one-way glass. Oh, yeah. But I have to say, it is a harrowing experience. Have you ever done one, Ed? No, I haven't. Oh, no, it's, it's like jury duty. Anyone can be roped in. <laughs> I just don't know. It could have been any one of them. Yeah. Right. Could the drawing be turned sideways? Someone you know it can't. <laughs> Excellent performance there, Tony. Now, which one of them is you? I'm not sure. <laughs> but, OK, if you're going to make a cop show, what are the clichés that you want to avoid? City homicide. <laughs> well, <laughs> number one would have to be the mismatched or at least niggling duo. Surely that's run its course. We've had Starsky and Hutch. Bodie and Doyle, Cagney and Lacey, oh. Crockett and Tubbs, Who? Dempsey and Makepeace, Ten Speed and Brownshoe, oh. Randall and Hopkirk deceased. One of them was dead. How mismatched is that? <laughs> Hardcastle and McCormack, Magruder and Loud, Simon and Simon, our own Willing and Abel, Deal and Pasco, Ponch and the other one from Chips. Hang, 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 hang on, Tony. Did you say Deal and Pasco? Yeah, Deal and Pasco. Uh, isn't it Dalziel? No, no, that's a, it's a Scottish thing. It's, it's spelt Dalziel but pronounced Deal. Haven't you seen the Scottish version of Deal or No Deal? Oh, there it is there. <laughs> But the second most popular cliche to steer clear of, and it's one we all love, mm -hmm. in my office, now! Oh. Every cop show has to have an angry chief, whether it's this bloke, or this bloke, or this bloke. What? That's the boss from Lancelot Link, Secret Chimp. That's a whole nother show. Yeah, fair enough. But every cop has one of those explosive scenes, and let's look at one from the current hottest new cop show, Justified, with Timothy Oliphant as the US Marshal who breaks all the rules. Here he is, being confronted by his boss. You've been to see Boyd? Yeah. Even though your friend David Vasquez expressly told you not to. I could try again. I'll take care of Vasquez, and I'll call the Stadies and see if they can help us in any way. Slam the door. He didn't throw his badge down on the boss's desk. The boss didn't claim that the DA's been all over his ass. Or that the DA has his balls in a vice. There was none of that. <laughs> but what they've done is, of course, flip it around. Don't we love that? That's what a great show does. And Justified is top shelf in every department, although they do still bust out one of my favourites, the overly detailed newspaper headline. Have a look at that. <laughs> Bloody hell, that's a short story right there. <laughs> 
take a day off work to read that. Uh, uh, sorry, Tone, I've got a, a tweet here from Ruby Rose. Oh, that's nice of her to, yeah, to tweet. No, as well. it is. She says, uh, hey guys, um, scripted is cool, but why don't you do some reality shows, LOL? Oh, that's really, <laughs> that's really uh, nice of Ruby to take time out of her busy schedule doing endless interviews about her tattoos. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> We can do that. We can oblige. Reality shows are cheap. Uh, the drama's already there. Mm -hmm. But because shows like Cops have been on for so long, like David E. Kelly, they're having to come up with newer and weirder storylines. In the daytime, we wanted to get a little creative because, you know, it's a lot harder to make the arrest in the daytime. So uh, Officer Pasley has graciously volunteered to address as Coco the Clown. How are you doing today? I think you're cute. So, uh, how about a little clown action, huh? Like Come on! Oh. Hang on, so is that guy really a police officer? Oh, yeah, in the next scene, he receives a service known as a funny ending. <laughs> oh, but... But that tells me they're running out of ideas down at cops. <laughs> Tony, you know, I feel bad because I judge the suspects on reality cop shows as soon as I see them. Right. When I watch Border Security, there's an elderly man with a suitcase. I know it's full of dried fruit. <laughs> but <laughs> I especially judge people on RBT. It's a right. whole show of random breath tests. Yeah. And for those who might find themselves pulled over and the cameras are rolling, I've compiled the three things that make you look guilty. Try and avoid these if you can. How many drinks do you have, sir? Three. Yeah, three. And it was wine? Yeah. Red, red or white? Red. Red wine? What size were you drinking, sir? Okay. I've got a goblet this big. Sir. Okay. <laughs> Don't say you drank out of a goblet. It makes you look like you're guilty and like you're a wizard. <laughs> the types of vessels to avoid saying you've been drinking out of are goblets, yard glasses and buckets. <laughs> None of those sound like responsible drinking. Not a good move. You should also avoid this phrase. I turned around the corner because I didn't want to go past the booze bus. No! No! Don't say that! It's like saying I saw the booze bus so I sculled all the VB I had and drove past the cops mooning them. <laughs> and the number one thing that makes you look guilty on RBT. All right, what I need you to do is take a deep breath and blow into this in one breath gently until I tell you to stop. No, don't, don't need to grab hold of it. Feel free to start blowing whenever you like. <laughs> Not blowing into the machine and giving a thumbs up. It makes you... <laughs> makes you look guilty as. Clearly, the lessons of RBT is do not drink and drive. That's a really bad idea. Just stop after the first goblet and... <laughs> as all those clips show, Tony, there's no suspect, like a real suspect, because no one could act that stuff, not even Adam West. <laughs> no. And after the break, we'll meet TV's toughest interrogator... Judge Kappa. Oh, yes. Stay with us, please. <laughs> Beautiful. Welcome back to the Joy of Sets. Tonight we're looking at what makes a great TV justice show, but mm. we haven't really talked about interrogations. Oh, yes. And it's time for our mystery door. Ah, oh, Tony, if only our mystery door guest was also Australia's best interrogator. <laughs> Great to see you, Martin. Lovely to see you. Beautiful. OK, take a seat. Yes! Oh, man. All right. Well, Martin... Where do we start? Uh, well, thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you for, well, thanks for joining us. Now we're, just, now, we're just about to see you in the big screen epic about the Melbourne Cup called The Cup. Yes. Originally, I thought it was a big screen remake of Two Girls, One Cup. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> And that's great. <laughs> Definitely not. We changed it to the goblet. Yeah, the goblet. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you are you're a screen justice legend. So I want to start by asking you, which of these TV shows and films have you not been in? OK. <laughs> Jake and the Fat Man, Irresistible Force, My Husband, My Killer, Blue Healers, Sea Patrol, City Homicide, The Strip, Rescue Special Ops, or Crime Stoppers the Musical? <laughs> Crime Stoppers the Musical. Oh, OK. <laughs> you were in Jake and the Fat Man. You were in I my, was. my Husband, My Killer, my favourite telly movie, because it gives away its ending in its title. That's what <laughs> I love about it. <laughs> but, yeah. but, Martin, you, you've often ha had done the interrogations in a show. Is that mm. that's true? Correct. OK, I want to I take you through some of them, because you are the master. Let's take a look at one from a Blue Healers. Yeah, I don't breed horses. I just ride them. And I wouldn't know an artificial insemination set up from a cow's ear. 
Okay, now you said you spend the night with your horse, Lulabelle? Yeah. But someone stole the semen from the tank. <laughs> So that's you interrogating Sam Worthington about stealing horse semen, correct? Correct. <laughs> now, correct. This, this... I think I was off camera because I was giggling too. Yeah. <laughs> How did you keep a straight face? It through was that? very difficult. Yeah. But I think there might have been a bit of artificial insemination in Avatar. Actually, oh, you know? so... <laughs> well, I think you gave Sam his start. Apparently, that's the scene that James Cameron saw and thought, "That's my guy." <laughs> yeah. No. That's the softly, softly interrogation. Yeah. Okay. Well, then there's um, this method that you used in Sea Patrol. Okay. You give me the frequency now. You are a naughty boy. Yeah. Well, now that. Stennis and I had a lot of trouble doing that because yes. we had serious giggles. And we, yeah, we had the big giggles. In between and, the headbutts. Uh, yeah, well, actually, we rehearsed it outside, okay. and we kept on saying, are we going to get through this? We finally came to do it, and, you know, we got what we got. But that line, you're a naughty boy, yeah. was an ad lib. Oh, that's Which what I'm, I like to hear. I'm quite happy with it. Yeah, that they've left it in. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy with it. <laughs> uh, so that's the direct interrogation. Yeah. And you, we know that we can tell you you enjoyed that one, but in Underbelly. Mm. We saw a very dark side of your interrogation methods, what I call interrogation with a moustache. Tell me. Put it away! Tell me you're not working for Williams. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I am not working for the fat boy. You've That's got... defamatory, apart from anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's Carl Williams. So you've got the exactly. naughty boy and the fat boy mm. action. What's going on with the moustache there? Is it all yours? I grew the moustache. Fantastic. And then a critic wrote in and said, why is Martin Sachs wearing a fake moustache? It looks ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and that critic and is was... here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And what's going on there with the lady-sized gun? That's... Yeah, no, it's, it's a delicate little piece, isn't mm. it, that, that gun? They got it out of a show bag, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's from the Hoadley's bag, oh, that one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Now, Martin, will you stay with us? Absolutely. Oh, but before goodness. we go to the break, how would you oh, like yes. to have a crack at doing an In My Office Now? I think I can have a good go at that. I'll OK, if you want to step over to the mystery okay, door okay, once again. Wear a couple of gum shoes. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wear a couple of loose cannons. OK, okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on the phone to someone. <laughs> Cavalier! Martin! My office now! Oh, that's beautiful! <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. You know what the problem with you boys is? You're cops first, and lovers second. Oh. <laughs> He's good, isn't he? Martin that's Sachs, good. everybody! After the break, see if you can guess the most unlikely justice show ever made. That'll be next. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome back to the Joy of Set Special Victims Unit. Martin Sachs is still with us. <laughs> yes. And Martin, uh, I want to talk about stunts. Now, you do a lot of your own stunts, but back in the day, the height of the old cop show stunt was the forward roll. Here we go, yeah. and um, out he goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that roll cost ten million dollars, and, and he rolls straight into a guy trying to shoot him. And not to be outdone, Miami Vice came out with an amazing forward roll of their own. Oh yeah! <laughs> okay, what a forward roll through a window, and it's there for no reason. The cops are downstairs. That guy's just—he just shot into a window. He's just killed two people watching The Price Is Right. <laughs> Okay, enough forward rolls. Okay. It's time to play. <laughs> Here's how the game works. Tony, Martin and I are going to read out three terrible ideas for a justice show. One of them is real and was actually made. A suspect from our audience lineup will be forced at gunpoint to guess which one it is. And that suspect is you, madam. Cassie, I believe, is your name? Yep, that's right. <laughs> Excellent. Just but interrogating you. That's that how we do it. Really Let's go well with predicted. that. If you guessed correctly, Cassie, you will take home a wonderful prize from the recently dusted for Prince Joy of Sets <laughs> gift shop. Yes, and helping us out with the pointing tonight, would you please welcome an original male model from the unjustly forgotten 1992 musical quiz show Keynotes, semi-hosted oh. by Richard Wilkins, Mr. Gareth Walker! Excellent work. 
Yes, and up for grabs tonight. It's the Nick and Jessica Variety Hour on DVD. Contains all one episode. The Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine. Help them solve the mystery of what happened to Freddie Prinze Jr. <laughs> Why not play the six million dollar man? Steve Austin awakes to discover he can almost afford a flat in Sydney. <laughs> Authentic Doctor Who Dalek does all the catchphrases. Exterminate, you will obey, and does my bum look big in this? <laughs> yes, it could all be yours, beautifully pointed, oh, Gareth. Okay, how's yeah. that? I'll start. Okay, is it In Laws In Law, a Canadian reality TV show about a Toronto rookie cop who shares a squad car with his mother in law, who's also his commanding officer? He's armed and she's dangerously annoying. <laughs> Or is it Steel Justice, an American cop show about what happens when a cop's son is killed, then becomes reincarnated as an electronic steel Japanese dragon toy, which, when angry, expands to the size of a house? <laughs> or is it Loose Cannon? In this 1980s US show, Tony, Loose and Angie Cannon are both damn good cops with one big problem. They're married, and both of them are now gay. They're still partners in the eyes of the law and the force, but their secret sexuality is driving them both crazy as they share a squad car. OK! <laughs> Tassie, which one is the real show? In-laws, um, in-law, Steel Justice or Loose Cannon? Um, I'll go with Steel Justice. Is she right? When his son is killed... Oh, yes! Somehow that is the correct answer. There is the child reincarnated as a dragon which expands to the size of a house when angry to fight crime. How could that have not worked, I ask you? Only one episode was made. It was never screened. Really? Well, well played, Cassie. And just for playing, you win legal advice from this man. <laughs> Would you please thank the man that everyone wants to be interrogated by, Martin Sachs. Yes. <laughs> and that is it from us this week. But before we go, we had such a great response to the Channel 9 dancers a couple of weeks back, didn't we, Ed? Uh... We've asked them back in their current guise as the rescue special ops dancers. And under tonight's end credits, they will time, be... Time, time, time. Don't you watch your own show? What? There are no end credits. Thank oh, you, Martin. He's hopeless. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Good night, everybody! Not again! You are fucking...